Hey guys, Peter with GIS Solutions. Today I'm going to show you how to generate stream order using QGIS using a digital elevation model or DEM. Stick around and I'll show you how to put this into a 3D environment. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so let's get started. So I'm going to add my raster data set by going up to layers, add layer, add raster layer. And if I click over here to the ellipse, it'll all browse to where I have my DEM, my digital elevation model raster file. And I'll open that and I'll add to my QGIS project and close out the window. So before we begin, if we double click and you go over to other layer properties under source, let's make sure that we're in the coordinate reference system, the CRS. Uh, if it's not, uh, this process is not gonna work. So let's just make sure that we have the CRS here as the source. Let me go ahead and close out of that. And this is a meter, so we have the lowest elevation and the highest elevation for this particular area. So let's begin by going using our toolbox. And if it's not visible, like mine isn't visible here, we can come up here to the top and select processing and select toolbox. Okay. And let me just close all this out. So the first thing we're going to do is process this DEM. And this tool is called fill. If you type in fill, it should come up with this fill sinks. Wang and Lu. Now where that's located, if you don't want to search for it this way, is under Saga. If you open this up, come all the way down to Train Analysis Preprocessing. So if you open that up, here's that Phil Sinks Wang and Lu. So let me double click onto that. And it already populated by DEM. I'm going to keep this minimum slope as the default. We want the filled DEM. That's this process we're going to do. So we'll leave this check mark checked. Uh, flow directions and watershed basins, it will generate that data, but I'll save that for another video. So we could either just say we could run this and it'll be a temporary file, or we click on this ellipse button and save to a file. And let me say, I'm just going to call it Project Dem 1. And click Save and Run. And this should only just take about a minute or so to process. And that's complete. Let me close out of this and I can uncheck this. The next thing we want to do under the Saga Tools, Train Analysis is channels. So we open up this. We want to select channel network and drainage basins. So I'll double click onto that. And yes, this is the uh, file I want to use, the one I just created. Threshold, I'm going to keep that as a default. So we want to uncheck almost everything here except for channels. So right here, we want to Make sure this is checked. Okay. And again, I could either run this now and I'll have a temporary folder or a file, which I could save later, or I could click onto this ellipse and save to a file. I'm just going to call this channels2. Click save and run. Now, depending on your digital elevation model, um, it could the times might vary as far as this processing goes. So it's all done. So I'm going to click close. And here are my stream channels. Now, if I right click onto that file and go to my attribute table, this field here, order, that's the order for the stream channels. So one will, will be the top part, 
and then it connects to two, then three. So that's a hierarchy. It goes from one, two, and three. The higher the number, the bigger the string. So let's go and um, add some symbology to that to make a little more sense here. Again, if I double click, I can go to symbology. Instead of a single single a single symbol, I could go to categorize. The value will be on order and I could click classify and I can select these and under um, color ramp I could just say blues and click apply okay and as you see the lighter the color is the lower the number the darker the color the bigger the string I could also add Google, or I'm sorry, OpenStreetMap, TopoMap, just to kind of compare the area. So if I take, uncheck the digital elevation model, you kind of see that, you know, um, the streams are there, in fact, and they're just sort of overlaid onto it. So, it, you know, it's quite accurate for what the tool is. So if we take turn this back on and we unclick our OSM layer. We could uh, apply a hill shade to this digital elevation model, make a copy, and we could kind of add some symbology to it and then ultimately we'll bring it to a three-dimensional environment. So I'm going to right click onto this DEM. I'm going to copy or rather duplicate the layer. Okay, turn this one off for now. And if I come up here to raster and I go to yeah, analysis, hill hill shape, go and click on to that. And yes, I want this particular input. And I'll run that. Close. So here's my hill shade. Turn this one off now. And I'll turn this DEM back on. Now if I double click onto this and I go to symbology, I could select a single band pseudo color. In this color ramp here, right in the color, I'm going to right click, go to create new color ramp, and then in the drop down, select category CPT dash city. Okay. Now this will give you all the color ramps. So there's a lot of great um, options here that you could use. I'm going to go under topography and select this SDA, click OK. Also, I want to add a little transparency here just so that we can click through this layer onto the hill shade. And there you go. There's just a really nice looking uh, file here. Now, the channels are not quite as visible as I want, so we can always, you can always modify this as much as you want. Um, again, I'm just trying to show you guys some simple ways to create these stream channels. So apply that. Yeah, you keep you keep playing around with that. But we could also order these just to make the a little more sense of the data. So if I excuse me, if I yeah click on to channels and then come up here to label single labels and then the value let's select that order so as you see the lower the number is the the uh it's like the feeder into the channel so these these two ones come into the two the two comes into the three which is the main channel so there you go that's creating the 
stream channels. Now we could take this one step further and look at this into a three dimensional view. So I've downloaded, or excuse me, not downloaded, but I've added the plugin QGIS 2 3 js And how I got that was coming up to my plugins, manage plugins and install plugins. So if I type in, it's already installed. QGIS 2 3 js But what I would do is just under all, start typing QGIS 2 3JS, you would check mark that and then you would install that. But again, I already have it installed. So what you would simply do is click onto the icon and it brings up a new window, a three dimensional window or a environment rather. And I could start turning on those layers I have like I just need that one. And there you go. It's just a really great way to really visualize your data. You could also change the extrusion here. Um, if you double click here. Nope, it's actually not there. I apologize. We are going to go over to scene settings so scene settings and the z exaggeration that's what it was so if i bring it down you can see that it's a lot less i can bring it back up and also there's a way to measure so let's just get to an area where we have where we have a couple peaks for example let's see Let's go from something we can see pretty good here. Let's go from this peak to this peak. So if we click, just left click once, we're able to get coordinates out of this little window. But also, if you click this measure distance, and we already have one point, if I click again over here, you can see that yellow line and I clicked here once and then twice. So it's going, it's declining. So it's descending by 44, almost 44.8 meters. And this is the horizontal distance. And we could do is just, you could right click to kind of clear that. <clears throat> and if I, Right click, I get this window again. So here's my point. If I click up this way, oh, excuse me, if I, let's see, escape that. So, okay. So if I want to measure from up from here to here, and this is a positive. So I'm going upward. That's 58.6 meters. So it's just a great little tool to kind of play around with, to get measurements, get distances, and to view your data in a three-dimensional environment. So I hope you guys found this useful. As always, please leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.